Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you a fantastic method of painting a tomb guard of the Tomb Kings of Khemri for, well, depending on when you watch this, either Warhammer Fantasy or Warhammer the Old World from Games Workshop. Now the Tomb Guard are the elite foot troops of the Tomb King's army, so on these miniatures you have quite a lot of detail in the form of lots of gold and lots of bandages, but everything else in the miniatures are actually really common across all the infantry and even some of the cavalry of the army. So if you're looking to collect Tomb Kings, this is a video you definitely want to watch. Hope you enjoy it, let's get to it. When it comes to painting the vast majority of Tomb King's miniatures, a great starting point to go for for a primer is to use the appropriately named Zandri Dust. So that's exactly what I've used here from Citadel. Great sort of sandy colour to get things going. And with this miniature, what we need to do first of all is pick out all the bone details, but at the same time we can also address an issue with these models and that the bandages that appear on them can be quite complex and confusing when it comes to base coating them. So what we can do is dry brush the bone colour onto the miniature, and what this is going to do is catch the bandages as we go, which sort of keys them out. It means that when it comes time to base coat them it's actually much much easier to see exactly where they're going and what shape they are so that's why we're going to start out with this. So what we need is a medium bone colour and we're going to dry brush it onto the model so what I'm using here is some skeleton legion and to apply it I've got a small dry brush from Citadel. What we've got to do is just get some of this onto the brush and get some tissue and work it into the bristles whilst also removing the excess paint Bring it down to around about this point here. So it's going to be a fairly strong dry brush, this one. Now, as we apply it to the miniature, the main thing we're looking for are the bones. So, for example, around his head, I want to start brushing it on like this, working it onto the model so we're getting that light colour really building up on the exposed part of the bones just there. But you can see on his face are some of those bandages, so I'm dry brushing over those too, and it's going to help key those out a little bit. Same is true as we get down to the body. You can see on the back here, if you look at the back of the legs, there's a lot of bandages down there, but there's also bones in amongst them. So it's going to dry brush at these, making sure we get those bones and also bring in out the bandages as we go along. Once you've finished dry brushing that bone colour onto the miniature, the next thing we're going to do is start painting one of the most eye-catching colours on the Tomb Guard, which is the gold. And for this, what I'm going to use is some Dragon's Gold. And to apply it, I'm going for a size 1 brush this time for some accuracy, because we want to be careful as we block this in, just looking for any metallic detail at all on the miniature and painting it with this colour. So don't worry about silvers and things, because that doesn't really appear so much on Tomb Kings. Instead, we want to stick to this gold for all these metallic parts, which are going to largely appear on the shield, where actually we've got quite an open space at the moment, because most of this is going to be metallic with a few of the colours picked out later on. But also there's lots of decorations around the rest of the miniature. So look out for little bits of scale armour, such as down here for example. And also we've got the crest going across the top of his head. Here we have the miniature with all of that gold base coated, and I just want to quickly point out, take care when you're doing all the scale armour because it's quite easy to miss some of the parts of that. But once you have got all that gold, what we're now going to do is add another tone of gold onto it, specifically on the blade of the sword, just to give the impression that it's much more polished than the rest of the gold on there, so as to hone it towards a sharpened edge. And so for this, what we want is a paler gold. I'm going to use some glistening gold here, and to apply it, going for that same size one brush, because this is just a little base coat on a particular detail. As ever, just make sure the paint's thin down and ready, and then we can start looking for this area, and it is all the actual flat part of the blade going along here. So all the way up to the cutting edge, all along the flat, all the way down to the hilt. Now that we've got that variation there on the sword, it's time to move on to the next selection of base coat colours. And here we're going to start out by base coating the bandages, and we want a sort of medium brown for this, so I'm going to use some ancient forest. Then it's time to get some colour on here, and we're looking at for that classic Egyptian look, so a turquoise and red. So for the turquoise, I'm going to use some cursed blue, and then for the red, I'm going for sanguine scarlet. But first of all, what we need is that ancient forest, and to apply this, I'm still going to use my size 1 brush, and it's time to start looking around the miniature and picking out all the bandages that are on it. Now in the case of Tomb Guard, there are quite a lot. If you're doing the troops like archers or anything like that there are far less to worry about here but basically what we're going to do is just work our way around the body looking for all of them so you can see there's quite a few on the back of the legs just looking for these parts here and just pick out that texture there like that just working away around the miniature looking for all of them
Here we have the model with all those bandages base coated, and you can see just what I mean in that there's actually quite a lot of them. But with that done, we can now move on to getting some colour onto the miniature. And we're starting out with some cursed blue here, so a nice turquoise colour. What I'm looking for is the main backing of the shield. So around these scarabs, you can see I'm just going to be painting this region in between and just here. If you do happen to catch any of the scarabs as you're doing this, just neaten it up with a little bit of gold afterwards. But also in the middle, I want to get the background of it here as well. Now, as we get to these alternating parts, I'm going to have these alternating red and blue. Now, what I like to do for these is start out by just painting them entirely with one colour or the other. So I'm going to start out with the turquoise here, just painted the whole thing. Same is going to be true on the headdress that we've got up here, where I'm looking for these parts which I'm going to be alternating. And also we've got this one going around his shoulders just here and around his neck. So I want to make sure I block these in at this stage too. Once your base coat that blue, it's then time to start breaking it up with some red. So here I'm using some Sanguine Scarlet, and what I'm going to be doing is alternating these little segments that we've got, such as around here, but also I'm going to base coat in the grip of his sword. With those base coats now applied, you can see the iconic colour scheme coming through, and so with that done, it's now time to put a wash onto the miniature. And for this, what I'm going to go for is a brown wash to really tie everything together and get a nice earthy feel to it. So I'm going to use some Battle Mud wash for this, and because I'm painting it over the whole miniature, you want to go for a large brush. So I'm using a medium shade brush here from Citadel. All you need to do is just load up a generous amount on your brush, and then start applying it all over the miniature. So washing it all the way over so it runs into all the nooks and crannies and gives you that shading on the miniature, and also really helps define all the detail on it too. Now, as you're applying quite a lot of this, do keep an eye on how it's settling, because the nature of skeletons like this, with lots of little fine detail and thin parts, can easily clog on things. And you can see actually it's happening on the shield, even on a large area like this. There's too much wash in an area like that, so what you do is just use your brush like a sponge whilst it's still wet, absorb away the excess paint, then redistribute it elsewhere. When it comes to clogging details, do take care around the middle of the body, around the waist and amongst the ribs, because that's a good culprit for this sort of thing happening. And also on any thin arms and things that are hanging off, so for example on the elbow around here. Now once you have got this washed all over the miniature, give it plenty of time to dry. I'd recommend leaving it for about 45 minutes before you move on to the next stage. The wash is now completely dry, and you can see how it's really given the model a lot of depth and definition. But it has made some things a little bit murky on those flatter surfaces, so now what we need to do is just a little bit of layering to clean that up before we move on to highlight the miniature. And for this we'll start where we started painting the miniature really, with that bone colour for all the bones on the miniature, and in this case what I'm going to use is some Skeleton Legion, so going back to that original colour. But this time to apply it, we need a fine brush, so I'm using a size 0 here from Artisopus. Now this time with the paint we just need a small amount on the brush and just bring the bristles to a good point and then on the bones where they're visible we're looking for the parts that stand out and are more raised up. So if we go around its head there are some bandages in the way but you can see we've got parts showing through such as the top of the skull right here. We're aiming for the flat parts in the middle of these areas and just being careful to avoid recessed details where more of that wash settled. So you can see I'm just applying it here what I'm doing is just well, essentially re-establishing re that colour, but I'm also retaining the definition we got from the wash. Same is true as we get down towards the face here. We've got a bit of the brow showing through right in there and a little bit of the nose, so we're looking for areas like that. Also a little bit on the side of the eye socket right there. Then we've got the jaw line down here. So again, the same process, we're looking for the flat parts, just the jaw just there, but just being careful to avoid the recesses in between each of the teeth. With the bone parts cleaned up, we can now move on to one of the most important colours on the miniature, which is that gold. And here what we're looking at first of all is the more rich gold that we've used across the majority of the miniature, so we need to go back to the original colour we used. So here it's going to be some dragon's gold once again, and to apply it I'm going to go for the same brush, but for some of the finer details, such as the legs on the scarab designs, you might want to go for a smaller brush, the choice really is yours. But the process is the same as what we just did with that bone, in that we just need to make sure the paint is nicely thinned down and under control, a little bit runny as well, a little bit translucent. Just make sure you don't have loads of it on your brush too, so it doesn't go out of control. And then we're looking to identify those gold parts, and we're going to layer over them. So, for example, if we take a look at the shield, it's a matter of looking for these flat parts and just layering it on top of these areas. So around here, for example. But remember, as you get close to any recesses, just take your time. So we've got these little notches in the shield just here. We want to avoid those recesses and leave them dark, concentrating just on the raised up flat areas. With that layering done, you can see the gold is now nice and shiny once more, and so now we can move on to layering some of the other important colours that appear on the miniature. And we'll start out with that sword blade. Again, we need to go back to the original colour here, so that's going to be glistening gold. And then it's time to do that turquoise and red. So we're going to use some Cursed Blue, followed by some Sanguine Scarlet. 
But first of all, what we need is that pale gold. So some glistening gold, and I'm going for the exact same application here. So still using that size zero brush. As usual, just need to make sure the paint is thinned down and nice and smooth, so we get a nice smooth finish to it on the miniature. And with that prepared, it's time to reapply it onto the blade of the sword. And because it's quite a pale color already, this will go on nice and smoothly and easily, but we're looking to be careful to avoid those recesses. So you can see as I'm going here, I'm just being careful of the notches along the cutting edge. On the flat of the blade, we've got this recess design here. I just want to be careful going around it to make sure the brush doesn't fall into that recess part so it stays nice and defined. With that shine returned to the blade of the sword, we can now move on to the colours. So starting out with the turquoise, I'm back to cursed blue here, and still using that size zero brush, we're looking for the parts that we originally base coated with this colour. But again, just being careful to avoid the recesses. So you can see on these segments here, I'm just aiming for the flat part in the middle. As we go further down onto the shield where we've got the scarab designs, just looking for the flat parts, just being careful not to go quite into the corners where it meets that gold design. And then finally, we can move on to Sanguine Scarlet. And it's the same thing once again. We're just looking for the parts that we originally base coated with red, and we just want to reapply this color onto the flat areas, being careful to avoid any recesses. And with that, the layering stage is now complete, and you can see it's returned those nice colors onto the miniature. And if you want to, you could just leave it here, do the base, and your model's gonna look fantastic on the battlefield, especially in large ranked up units. But if you want them to pop out on the battlefield, highlighting is what you need to do. Or when it comes to highlighting, you could do everything, or just a few colors on there. The choice really is yours. But if you decide to do just a few, you need to pick out the really important ones. And when you're doing Tomb Kings, I definitely recommend if you highlight anything, make sure you highlight the bone. Because whilst on these guys, not that much is visible, it is a key part of the army, and on other skeletons, like your archers and things, there's quite a lot visible, so it is an important one to do. Now for this, what we need is a light bone colour, so I'm going to use some vampire fang for it, and to apply it, what you want is a small brush that holds a good point. That's exactly what I've got here, a size double zero from Artis Opus, and holding that fine point is really important because it just helps with that accuracy and that fine control as you're applying it to the model. So to do this, just make sure you thin that paint down with a little bit of water, just bringing it into the paint at the side there, just mixing it in, just testing the feel of it until it's flowing really easily from your brush, but not so easily that it's going out of control. So it's a bit of a balancing point to find. See, I'm just manipulating the paint and playing around with it until I reach that point. Just bringing in more pigment as I need to, and I think we're about there now. now I've got quite a bit of paint in the brush at this stage, so I'm just gonna remove off some of the excess, draw up a little bit fresh, and then we're ready to go. So for the bones, what we're looking for are parts that stand out, any edges, any corners, things like that. And a lot of it is quite obscured, but if you look at the face, there's definitely some in here to do, such as the brow. So I'm just gonna dot in a little bit of this color just on there. The top of his nose is right there, so I wanna make sure I get that. And also you can see a little bit of the bone on the side of the eye socket. So I'm just gonna dot a bit of this color in just there. Then we've got the jawline here, and it's quite a strong edge going around the actual bottom of it there. So I'm just going to run some of this color along that part there like that then dot a little bit of it onto the teeth as well. So just highlighting it there finely like that. And it's basically this process across almost all the skeleton, except for parts where you can see the top of their head. Now when you get to this part, just make sure that you don't have much paint in your brush and make sure it is thinned down with some water and just lightly apply it onto the top of the skull. So just around there, just so it's a little bit lighter towards the top where the light would catch it. With that done to the bone, we can now move on to the next most important color, which is going to be that gold. And for this, what we want to go for is a really light gold, first of all, for the main part of it. So we can actually use glistening gold here, but then for that sword blade, because we went for glistening gold as its mid-tone, we need to go even lighter than this. So in this case, I'm going to use some platinum crown. But first of all, what we need is glistening gold, and to apply it, I'm going for the same brush here, that size double zero once again, because it holds a really good point. Remember, that's the important thing as you're doing this technique, you want a really good point in the brush so you can get accurate fine lines with it. Now again, thin the paint down so it's nice and smooth. And with this color, we're looking to follow all the sharp edges on the golden detail. So for example, if we take a look at the shield, to begin with, we want to go around the outside of it. And because we've got quite a sharp angle here, you can approach the side of your brush, skim down it, and get that brighter line following that edge all the way along. Same as we go over the crest at the top, again, using the side of the brush and just gently following it around, changing the angle of the model as you need to, and making sure to skip past these little notches that we've got just here. And this way we get a nice highlight along the edge really quickly and easily. Now when it gets to the parts on the interior of the shield or more delicate areas, it gets a little bit more tricky. In this case, you've got to use the tip of the brush. And to do this, just make sure you brace your hands so you're nice and steady and just paint it on in this downward motion, just using the tip of the brush to follow the edge with as narrow a line as possible to get a nice highlight on these parts.
With that gold highlighted, we can now move on to a platinum colour because we need that for the sword blade here to go even lighter. So I'm using some platinum crown, just looking to apply this in the exact same way as what we've just done for the rest of the gold. And if you want to take the model a little bit further, you can also use this colour as a fine highlight in the gold. You might just want to reserve this for the command group. The choice really is yours, but if you decide to go for it, look for the sharper parts or areas that catch more light. Just apply a little bit of it onto the edges of those parts. And with that, all of the gold is now highlighted. So it's time to move on to highlighting those remaining colours on the miniature. And we'll start out with the blue. For this, I'm going to go for some Raygun Glow. And then for the red, I want a nice bright red here. So I'm going to use some Demon Red. Then to finish off, we've got the bandages. And in this case, I'm just going to be using a little bit of Wasteland Brown. But first of all, what we need is Raygun Glow. And to apply it, I'm going for that small brush once again. So the size double zero here. And with this, it's a matter of edge highlighting again, just like we did with the metallics, but on the blue parts now. So the segments, things like that. So make sure your paint's thinned and ready for the purpose, and we can start applying it onto these parts. And some of the blue is quite easy to get to, such as the bottom of the shield, where again we can use that technique where you approach the side of the brush and just skim along to get a nice highlight on those parts. But when it comes to the segmented parts, it's a little bit trickier because you just need to really make sure your hands are nice and steady as you approach these parts, because what we're looking for is an outline on these bits. So just a line there, for example, a line there. And always make sure you're comfortable in doing this, so just turn the model as you need to so you're still doing that downward motion and follow the other sides to complete it going around that segment. Once you've finished doing that with the turquoise, we can then move on to the red. And here I'm using some Demon Red and the application is identical to what we've just done with the blue. So looking for each of these segments and just carefully working our way around each one. And then finally, it's time to move on to Wasteland Brown, and this is going to be a highlight for the bandages. And we're just looking for the edges again, and when it comes to the bandages, you don't actually have to highlight all of them, but if you are going to do any of them, be sure to do the ones around the face. Again, just looking for any edges and just following along. Now, once this is done, the miniature is ready to be based, and as usual, it's entirely your choice what basing scheme you go for here. But I am, of course, going to go for a desert base to represent the sands of Nehekara. And with the base now fully painted, this tomb guard is complete and ready to arise in service of his lord. So as you've seen, painting these models is very straightforward, but bear in mind with Tomb Guard, there is quite a lot of detail in the form of lots and lots of bandages, but also plenty of gold and the other colours, such as the red and the turquoise that we put on here. But bear in mind, all the methods and techniques, and even the full order that we painted this in, can be applied to loads of other miniatures in the army, really any sort of skeleton that you might want to paint. So whether you're painting archers, horsemen, even chariot crew, this guide will see you through painting them. So have fun raising your legions, and we'll see you on the battlefields of the old world. <laughs>